is what was the damage to the emotional uh, core processor, if you will, of the abused spouse. So this particular spouse didn't have no restrictions. She could still do art. She could still do a lot of things, but it wasn't, um, it was certainly frowned upon and made her uh, upset about it. Now, once we identify that we have the financial abuse situation, one of the positives is I've got the financial records to the penny. We need to get a copy of those spreadsheets, a copy of the program, because a lot of cu couples have personal financial software that they use because it's super easy to pay bills now and all that other kind of stuff. But so it, in some ways it makes my job easier where it makes it tremendously difficult is for my client to begin the recovery process. And the only way we can get the person into starting the recovery process is convince them that they need recovery, that they need therapy and counseling. And that's one of the things I ask every therapist and counselor I ever talk to, do you have advice for the lawyers on how to convince somebody who's been the victim of abuse that they need to go talk about it and understand how it impacts their personality and decision making. And the reason that's terribly important is we're gonna have a divorce settlement coming within the next three, six, nine months, maybe even a year that we need our client to exercise clear judgment and not be colored by the emotional damage that's occurred over a long period of time that seeped into their personality and their confidence of their decision making. Do you have any advice for us lawyers on how to convince somebody that they need to take that time and have those conversations with a counselor or therapist? Yeah, that's so important. I'm glad you asked that. You know, in the last episode, Courtney Fields and I talked about that because in this stage, people are in a trauma response. And when questioned in a courtroom, you know, it's often, you know, when people will dissociate and not even know what question they're being asked or what question they're answering, it's a fight, flight, freeze response. So it's almost like they're envisioning the spouse asking questions. And so it'll be shutdown mode. And so even just explaining to the client that, you know, right now, you know, you're not thinking clearly because you've been through a trauma. And in order to, you know, answer the questions more effectively, it's important to, you know, to be able to answer the questions as you would have, you know, before the marriage, as you would have before going through this trauma. And, um, you know, the body holds trauma and you will answer questions through that trauma lens, almost 